So there can't be much to this, right? I have been putting off making candles for pretty much, I mean years, like years. Okay, let me just pop in here really quickly to say that how I made my candles is actually a completely fine way to make candles. You 100% can make beeswax candles without adding anything to it. All you need is beeswax for a very simple candle. However, um, at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how you can avoid some of the things happening that did with mine. So let's just get straight into the video. And I'll talk to you afterward. Okay, let me just, let me just tell you that I have had these supplies since I bought them years ago when Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone did her video on making candles for Christmas presents. So I have the wicks and I have yellow beeswax, 100% natural. And I have had this just sitting around waiting for me to do it. So today we're going to do it. Join me. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome. And my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog capturingwinterland.com. Today, I want to bring you along as I make 100% beeswax candles with repurposed containers that I have thrifted. All right, so I have never done it before, but it looks pretty easy. So what we need is some wicks or you can make your own. I have not ventured into that far into it yet, but perhaps I will do that later on this year. I have some beeswax and I actually have a lot more than this. I went ahead and bought a giant box from Amazon of white beeswax pellets. This is five pounds, you guys, because I have, oh yeah, I almost forgot, one more thing. You also, if you want to add scents to it, you can add some scents. I've got eucalyptus, tangerine, orange, clove, and cedarwood. I'm thinking I'm leaning towards cedarwood because that feels like a very wintry smell. Oh my gosh, it just smells so good. You know I'm a big fan of cedar. Clove smells delicious and like fall as well. Oh yes. But I also love the citrus scents. I'm not sure about eucalyptus. Let me see if I can, maybe, maybe eucalyptus. I was kind of hoping I would have grapefruit, but I don't know what happened to it. It's somewhere. I shall find it for another video. In any case, I'm gonna pick which one I wanna use of that, but that comes into the process when you're about to pour, like you wanna mix it right before you pour it. I have this little itty bitty baby crock, just adorable. And I feel like these are 100% perfect for making those really pretty, charming candles for your house. And then I also have this little white glass container that I bought earlier in the fall as a part of a thrift haul. And I thought that this would make a very perfect candle. And then I have this giant baby. <laughs> it's a Calcana Club dairy company calcana wisconsin so it says it spreads like butter copyright 1933 so this one i feel like could easily be a three wick candle that's why i felt the need to buy some extra also i have some seasonal containers for like the fourth of july and for easter that i also wanted to make into candles eventually when those seasons come up to start i think i'm only going to do this one pound and I'm thinking I also want to adhere my wicks to the bottom of my containers using a, using a hot glue gun because I feel like that would be better. So I'm gonna get out three wicks for the big one and then one for each of the smaller ones. And you will trim your wicks later on in the process. We'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself now. Acting like I'm some kind of a professional or something. I am not. However, let us get to this process because I'm very excited. I have been looking forward to this for years. All right, before we actually go to the kitchen to get the double boiler situation figured out, I do believe I'm going to get out my hot glue gun and situate my wicks so that is taken care of because I feel like once the, the wax is ready to pour, I'm going to need to just get to it. So let us do that first. I'm gonna get my hot glue gun out and we are going to situate our wicks exactly where we want them. Okay, so for this one, I'm thinking obviously like a triangular shape. 
So maybe there. So let's get right into it. I believe we need to get a double boiler situation going. So let's go into my very humble kitchen and get a makeshift double boiler going. Okay, so I've got my medium sized pot here, mostly filled with water. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in there to make it boil faster. I'm just gonna stick it on heat. And I have a glass bowl. Waste, not a one. Okay, once it has started to boil, I'm just going to stick this over the top here, and it's really close to boiling like so close. Check him back in. Ah! Out. It's hot! If you didn't know, steam is hot. I'm just trying to break up the chunks. I would say I'm probably like, I don't know, 20 minutes in to this process of boiling. We're down to the point where I think if I stir it, it will break up quicker. So I definitely don't want chunky candles. Okay, I'm extremely backlit here. It's all right, we'll survive. Now that I have turned it off, ha cha 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 cha. Um, my son has requested that I do orange instead of <laughs> the cedar wood. He does not like that smell at all. It smells weird. It smells like cedar, but he's not a big fan of that, so. I'm going to put like 20, 25 drops in here. I don't know, we'll see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I think that was a little bit more than 25. That came, that went pretty quickly. Let's do the big one first. My super sophisticated, oh, you can't see that. My super sophisticated setup here to try to keep the wicks straight up and down. literally got me half of that jar just in case you were wondering so I'm going to do this process all over again yay check back with you in a minute okay I have my second batch done this time and didn't undo everything because I do still need a little bit to do the last candle. And I'm just going to actually use the top of this to hold my wick up so that it can 
fully cool off, cool. And then I'm gonna um, cut my wick about an eighth of an inch above that line. So pretty. I used pencils for this one. It looks so good. I am so pleased. Um, I'm like 100% certain that this was probably a 32 ounce jug or um, crock, so it makes total sense that a one pound of beeswax wouldn't have filled it because one pound is 16 ounces. So just be aware when you're using repurposed containers that it is an experiment literally every single time you do it, unless it has on the container um, how many ounces it takes, and then you wanna make sure to, to weigh your beeswax before you start your project. I didn't even think about that, I don't know why. So. I am going to write a post all about this entire process and I will leave all kinds of resources and make it dummy proof for you because honestly, <laughs> I wish I'd done more research before I started and I knew that I was going to do this whole entire process, but I'm just kind of a last minute kind of person. So I learn the hard way so that you don't have to. That's my whole philosophy here. So I'm just gonna melt this last one and get this last little bit of candle filled. Okay, we've got the last of this done. I made this one into the cedar wood because he can't stop me, so. And of course the heat of the beeswax has peeled up the wick from the bottom. Guess I'll just be leaning that one. <laughs> This one is drying nicely. Get that cute little baby crock. It's so cute. It's like a mommy crock and a mommy. baby crock. I'm a princess. All right, I'm going to let these cool, probably in my dining room because it is the coldest place in the house besides my downstairs. And so these will cool off and then I will come and show them to you tomorrow with the finished product. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day, and as you can see, this candle turned out a little strange. So, I'm not really sure why it like concaved in the middle there. It's my first time doing this, so I don't know <laughs> why it did that, but I'm tempted to pour more in the middle of that. I don't know. I may just call it good. Like it's a learning experience, right? I may just call it good and burn it and I bet it'll probably even out when it melts. So that's probably my plan because cleaning that bowl with beeswax in it last night was like no joke. I was like, how the heck you get this stuff off? So I probably won't do that again unless I'm doing a large batch. So I'm just going to light this baby and um, hope that it evens itself out. But I think it's beautiful. Like this is so charming. Of course, this would make a fantastic gift. You know, if we hadn't just passed Christmas, you know, you can think for next year. So this would make a fantastic gift for pretty much anything as far as I'm concerned, but especially in like a gift basket of some sorts. Yes. And um, my big candle did exactly the same thing. So you let me know like why the heck that happened. Maybe it's because this room was so cold. Do you think? I don't know, but it's like literally big enough for me to stick my finger into. So I'm always worried that I'm getting like cheap products off of Amazon, but I'm sure somebody might let me know. And again, I'm just going to light this. I'm gonna cut my wick. Let's see. I'm gonna cut it with these ginormous scissors to about two eighths, maybe. And then, see this one turned out great. Like this one turned out beautiful. Look at that. It's just perfect. That one turned out right, but you know, this one had the least amount of wax as all of them. Maybe I kind of should have shook it around a little bit. I don't know. I think it just dried weird, maybe because it's so cold in this thing. So that is my thought on that. Let me see if I can find some. I'm gonna go get some, um, my brain. I am going to go get some matches and then we will try lighting it and we'll see what it looks like then. So 
I just want to quickly say that I dove deep down into the whole of beeswax candle making last night because I wanted to know the conversions and I wanted to know what happened with my candles and how I could avoid it happening again. So here's what I found out and all of this information and very much more is going to be in my post. I like to be very thorough when I am getting into a new realm of information and I want to make it as dummy proof as I possibly can for y'all as well as myself in our future endeavors. That being said, what happened with my candles is what is called tunneling. And it happens when you use beeswax only to make a candle. Only sometimes, it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna assume that it happens when you have a much larger volume of beeswax, like I did with my bigger candles, versus the much smaller one, which didn't have the same issues. It might also have to do with the drying process and the fact that it did dry in a very cold environment versus a slow, warm, dry kind of thing where it just slowly dried. So yeah, tunneling, and you can avoid that by adding actually coconut oil. And some recipes will tell you to only add like a quarter of a cup to a pound of beeswax, which is actually not really correct. I mean, you can do it that way, but what the real recommendation is, is a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you were going to do say a pound, which is 16 ounces of beeswax pellets, you would also want to add 16 ounces or two cups of coconut oil to your candle. And that makes a really great candle that won't have the same problems that mine did with the tunneling. The benefit also to that is that you get to use way less beeswax, which actually makes the candles way more affordable. Um, which they already are to begin with. So I will be really excited to try that with my next batch of candles. Of course, you can always melt them down if you have issues like this and start over again. I'm not interested in doing that, but you can do that. <laughs> my other issue was you are actually supposed to let the candles sit for like one to two days before you burn them. So my bad on that. I did not look at that at all. So you really want to Here's the process for doing it properly. And I will do another video when I do the holiday candles and stuff like that. However, or if I found some other great containers that I wanna use. So here's the process that you would want to follow. You would want to add your beeswax and weigh it and or measure it while you're doing it because beeswax converts dried to melted one to one. So it's basically one, one ounce dried to one fluid ounce. So it's very simple and I will have charts and graphs and all of that stuff and a complete recipe for how you can do this. I'm also making a conversion chart for canning jars. If you wanna use canning jars, which are much more obviously, they're all the same, you know, they have the weights and on how much volume each can take on there. So I will have a chart on there telling you exactly how many cups you would need for each or how many candles you can get out of each size. So I got you. So you would melt your candle wax, um, your beeswax, and then you would co completely melt that all the way. And then at the end of melting that, you will then add your coconut oil, which will be one to one. So if you add a pound of beeswax and you melt that, then you're also going to want to add two cups of uh, coconut oil and you'll probably want to use virgin refined coconut oil or extra virgin if you can find it so that your candles burn very clean and it's good for you to inhale because that is the nice thing about making your own candles is there aren't the same toxins that you will find in the ones at the store which are very bad for you. I'm not gonna go into all of that, but yeah. I used to burn candles all the time. And then after having babies, my body just got super sensitive to every kind of toxin out there. And without going into much more detail than that, I would start getting headaches and my eyes would get really bothered. So I don't buy candles anymore, which is amazing because I save all that money. <laughs> that being said, after you melt your coconut oil in there, you can also add any fragrances you want to, like essential oils, or you can completely leave them out if you don't want any of that either. You can also add other things like dried spices or fresh spices. Like I almost put in mo rosemary, just went outside and picked some rosemary, but I didn't. Maybe I'll do that in another one. If you wanna add that, and it also makes it look really pretty. So if you had a clear container, that would look really cute. So after all of that, you just pour it into your container and you let it sit for one to two days. 
and cure. And then you have this gorgeous handmade candle. So don't forget to check out the blog post when I have written it, I will add the link below, or you can just follow my website at capturingwonderland.com and I will post about it on all of my social media when it has released to let you know, because I gotta have all the details. All right, <laughs> I'm so thankful that you watched all the way through and that I could give you this um, additional beginner's knowledge after the fact. I mean, I think it's fun to watch somebody do something for the first time and just kind of see some of the pitfalls you might see along the way. Well, I think that they turned out really well, especially for as quick and least cost expensive. I mean, it's very reasonable, especially since I got one giant candle and then two small candles out of the mix, especially with the price of candles right now. Candles are insane, but the beeswax really wasn't that expensive. I think I paid $24 for five pounds and I still have a ton of that wax left. So I think I probably used a total of two pounds of wax, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe two and a half pounds of wax to make the three wick candle and then the two small ones. So it's really reasonably priced. It's not hard to do at all, super easy. And even with my beginner issues, uh, they still burn and they're still gonna be beautiful and they still add all of that beautiful charm and warmth to a room and a tablescape and they smell delicious. So that being said, I hope that you try this craft out quicker than I did. Um, it literally took me years to do it and not really sure why. <laughs> it's amazing how you can be intimidated by such a small task and just put it off forever. So let's not do that. Let's walk into 2020 with um, courage and bravery and the ability to try new things that we haven't before. So. I hope you had fun watching me do this task and I hope you get inspired to make something of your own and give those beautiful handmade gifts that truly mean the most, honestly. And I will see you in the next one. I am going to finish this dresser or slash sideboard slash buffet, whatever it is, server. I'm so over it. It is, it's been the elephant in the room for a while now and because it's so cold outside, it's hard to work on it properly. So there's gonna be some big changes to it. And I hope you're up for that because I'm finishing the beast and you will get to come along for the ride. So see you in the next one, guys. Happy New Year. And I hope that you all had a Merry Christmas. Bye.